welcome to the Swift Half, your weekly session of chat from the UK OCR and adventure running scene. Each week, pub landlord Alan and our favourite regular Ian discuss races, runners and anything else that comes to mind. So pull up a pew, pour yourself a drink and join us for the Swift Half. Ian, it's that time of week when I welcome you to Swift Half again. How are you, my friend? I'm good, Alan. I'm excellent this week. How are you? Me too. Me too. Normally, you say, how good are you? And you always, you always, I always give you a story to tell this week. But I'm not going to give you a story because I want to know your story because you raced last weekend. I did. But before we do that, there's one looking in the shadows, Alan, who you probably should say hello to. Oh, greetings. It's Dan. Dan, how are you? Dan Stevens. Howdy. I'm good. How is everyone? We're all good, then. We're all good. Um, before Ian tells us about his week, are you drinking, Dan? No. You're not really drinking? Not. No. This is the Swift Ark. How am I, Prophet, yeah. supposed to stay high if we're not drinking? <laughs> I've mean, literally got nothing to hand either, so no. <laughs> and listeners, this is real life. This is how much we actually, we actually do real life here. And Dan's going to attest here to the question, like, when Ian drinks, it picks his can up, Ian, what are you drinking? I'm actually, I think this might be my last one, uh, Athletic Brewing. I'm, I'm on the Run Wild, which I've had a few times. I prefer the Upside Dawn. Sophia, when you listen to this, probably in July or August, because I know you're a little bit behind, I might have used my um, gift card by then, and we might have some more, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, Alan, what are you drinking? Um, well, uh, yeah, you know, Morrison's have got the deal still on, um, but they've got a bit of a mixture. So I've gone today with Brewdog Planet Pale Ale. So the planet range is that that's good for the for the earth, isn't it? Good for the planet, you know, um, good for brew, tree. Good for Brewdog's profits. Well, yeah, but I think they plant a tree as well, don't they? I, I believe they plant a tree as well. I think it's in a forest. We don't come round to your house. <laughs> oh well I thought they were, I've got a plant put in back garden I thought they were coming around with two trees I brought two cans of Planet Pale Ale I was thinking two trees back garden they'll look nice at either side at door you know like them little bushy conifer type of things I'm thinking lovely little trees they are they would be nice of all, it's still Barnsley they'll get nicked mate they'll get nicked by tomorrow <laughs> if they planted them today they would be nicked by tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> more, more than likely, more than likely. Right, should we go on then? I'll, I'll tell you my, my story, seeing you are actually interested for a change. Uh, I presume... <laughs> <laughs> interested. I am interested. <laughs> I presume you mean Manchester, yeah? Yes. Okay, well, listener, if you got through the marathon session that we had last week, sorry, sorry about that, it was a bit longer than we, we'd got planned, but if you got through the marathon session last week, uh, I think at about hour four or five of that podcast, we talked about what we were doing, and I mentioned I had a Manchester 10K ticket. Yeah, and you wasn't sure if you were going to turn up? I wasn't sure it was going to turn up. I, hey, I didn't know that was going to turn up until it was mostly through the door, but it's amazing what, <laughs> what happened when you sign up to stuff you didn't know. But anyway, I, I didn't know until on, on the day, and training's been off and on, or off and on and off. Is that the right way? I like off and on. It's on and off, but I do like off and on. Off and on, so it's a bit like side by each. But anyway, yeah. off, off and on recently because... When I did high rocks, I pulled something because I'm a moron who decided to do high rocks with no training. Genius idea. Genius Fantastic. idea. All my best ideas come when I'm not drunk. Anyway, so I decided, yeah, I'd go, but I did I did the muddy duck way. Right. So what I did is I went, I went near near to my start time yeah. and I went right at the back of the pen. That's what muddy ducks do, right from the back. You can only run from the back. Right at the back of the pet. But I wasn't exactly last because this is probably a first for me. Someone else had the same idea. No way. Who was it? I don't know, but we almost we ended up on this weird Mexican standoff where <coughs> I'd move back a bit, he'd move back a bit, I'd move back a bit, he'd move back a bit. And it, it was hilarious. And eventually I, I gave up because I saw in the crowd uh, a second shout out in as many weeks. Uh, Leanne... Daniels, uh, the uh, daughter of Carrie Ann. Oh, yeah. Yeah, small, small world. I'd only um, gone and had dinner with uh, the, the, other, the other week to say bye to Carrie and 
there she was supporting Manchester 10K, which was which was lovely. It helped me <laughs> what I needed, just something to cheer you up before running 10K without training. Are you sure it was 10 and not 11? Because if you and this guy kept moving back, I reckon you might have been another K before you got to the start line. It may have been. It may have been. I actually did a stupid thing where because it's like London Marathon and you start fair, fair way back, yeah. I started my watch way too early. So my watch was completely out of sync with any of the mileage markers. It was hilarious. But anyway, the actual rate, it was fine. I ran at a nice pace. It was two minutes per mile slower than uh, what I've done at Manchester previously. I'm not a fast runner, but at Manchester, I can usually get sub-60-ish. But yeah, I came in at about one or nine, something like that. So 11 minute miles. But you know what was great about starting at the back? Overtaking people. Well, yeah, overtaking people. But seeing so many people and seeing them, they're obviously, this is going to sound a bit gate, gatekeeper-ish, so I apologise. They're honestly, most of them would be doing their first ever race of any kind. Yeah. And it was amazing just seeing, seeing that and just knowing how much better it's going to get for them. That's one of the reasons why I, one of the reasons I like to run from back, especially in OCR, because when you get to the walls, you know what I mean? Because I, I tend to run the first mile fairly slow and let everyone get up before I even start thinking about overtaking anyone. But then you'll get to the walls and you start helping them over and they're so grateful because the, the newbies, the complete newbies, half of them, they've got no chance of getting over anything um, at, at, that, at that point in the journey. You know what I mean? So helping them get over and seeing that, oh, thank you very much, you know, like, that sense of achievement that they've done it, I love that. You know, that's a, a great motivator for me. It really was. And like you said, I couldn't help them off of the walls because they'd taken them down. It yeah. was uh, just a, <laughs> just a flat, flat race. Uh, yeah, well, I, I don't, didn't they have a wall in Manchester between Man United and Man City ground? Isn't there a big wall there? Like the Berlin <laughs> wall, we'll call it the Manchester wall. <laughs> but might be, but we'd taken it, we'd definitely taken it down. But yeah, so... But I did get to run past people and you know, you know, wish them well. It it was really quite quite funny, and this is going to come off incredibly sexy. So I apologise in advance. If you want to cancel me, cancel me. But the the ladies obviously had a strategy. So a lot of them were jeffing, as they call it. You know, so they'd walk a bit, they'd run a bit, they'd walk a bit, they'd run yeah. a bit. Yeah. A lot of the men were doing what I'll call involuntary jeffing in that they were sprinting off as fast as they could and then almost collapsing, walking a little bit, and then sprinting off as fast as they could and then walking a bit because it was the same couple of guys who was keeping... You know, these guys were going faster than Ryan Atkins when they passed me. <laughs> that's, a, that's a right way of running that, isn't it? Sprint, collapse, walk. Sprint, collapse, walk. <laughs> But they'll they'll get it they'll they'll get it. But it it was really nice to see so many people doing the first run. So, listener, if you ever want, if you're ever not feeling a race, just go and start at the back and just take your time and just enjoy it. Definitely, I, that's what I. Well, I, I do that. I can't race anymore now. I'm I'm getting old and and that. But I, I love running front back and and enjoying it. But that's what running's about. If you don't enjoy running, we shouldn't be doing it. That's quite true. Or if you don't enjoy ru- running, only run when someone's chasing you. Oh, too right, too right. Shall we go on to a bit? We've got a lot of news. We've got a lot of Tough Mudder news. Shall we get some Tough Mudder news out of the way? Because I know we brought Dan in to talk Tough Mudder as well. Um, but there is a lot of Tough Mudder news this week, Ian. There is. Where do you want to want to start? Let's go with the best news ever, yeah, which is Tough Mudder Yorkshire has got hot showers. Which makes it the only venue in Yorkshire to have hot showers. <laughs> the only city in Yorkshire to have hot showers still. <laughs> Not venue. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that'll get me cancelled. Not sexist remark. <laughs> so, Dan, what do you make of this? Um, I think it's a good thing. Um, camping, it was always a big thing. Um, do you remember back in the day when it was like, uh, was it Apre Mud? Big tent, big bar. Um, they sort of closed that down. Still happened at camping. Um, then it all obviously everything just sort of disappeared. From what I've heard, there was a bit of a, a standoff with sort of Team HQ where it was they didn't want to necessarily pay for the hot showers because they weren't getting the numbers for the camping. 
but they weren't getting the numbers for the camping because they didn't have the hot showers. So I think this is where they've gone right. This is why I think it's why they haven't done it for Scotland. So they can get, you know, they can get it out there and say, right, we're going to do it from Yorkshire. We're going to have it here so people then can sign up to camp, which I think is, is fair enough. A bar as well. Yeah, and a bar. Yeah, yeah, it's coming back. Oh, yeah. it's, I can't wait now. I, I wasn't going to camp, but I think I'm going to camp now. It, it gets that, that whole atmosphere back as well. Um, I think it'll, it'll bring in more volunteers rather than going off to a hotel or just staying for the day. Um, people will stay for the both days because there is the hot shower, especially if, like volunteers if they want to volunteer and run on the same weekend. Um, it's harder to do if you don't live local um, and there's no hot showers if you're camping. And so, yeah. the venue of Yorkshire doesn't have a lot of hotels very close to it. I know. No, none of them are that close. No. Um, no. no. Midlands is probably the best for like campsites. Um, or it's one of the better ones for campsites. Um, but no, sort of hotel wise for Yorkshire, you probably skipped in maybe. Um, 20, 30 minute drive sometimes. Doesn't Yorkshire camping though, don't they throw it in that little corner, which is usually a good couple hundred metres away from the event village? Um, so Yorkshire was the first ever event that I did. Um, so I've done it every year that it's been on um, since 2013. Um, so they've had it in a few different places. Um, recently they've had it where the little wood, or last year they had it, where there was like a little wood section. It was just out the way, out yeah. the back. And there was, yeah. there was, it, it, it wasn't very good. That's um, what it's been every year that I've been. Bear in mind, I've never camped, you know what I mean? Yeah. But every, and I've been to the last four out of five or six. They, and they it's used to they, been there. No, they've had it to... The last time before COVID, it was down under the where the Cal Bridge was. Right. Through there and to the left. They had it in that corner. Um, well, that's even further away. Yeah, that's even further away, yeah. It depends where they put the village. Um, mm -hmm. If you're coming in the villages sort of on the right, they generally had camping fairly close. When they had the village on one side, the camping was around the other side, and it was, it was just further to all. Interesting. It's going to be interesting where it's going to be that year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can confirm I will not be camping. Well, mainly because it's just a short drive for me. So there's, it's kind of funny. It's a short drive for me from Lancashire, but it is for Alan from Yorkshire. Go figure. <laughs> That's crazy, that is. I live in the county and I travel further. <laughs> but, but yeah, like Dan said, we've been talking about volunteers and I do think this will be a positive step to try yeah. and get people back and try and, the community is still there, but there is a whole wave of newbies who haven't been exposed to the community. Yeah, which will be which will be good as well because everyone's a newbie at one point. And yeah. camping, I, I met some of my best friends camping. Yep. Yeah. So. This could be a prelude to a new dirty weekend, but tough mother style. Oh, probably not. They tried it with Apris Mud, and yeah. they didn't. I think think the problem is unlike Dirty Weekend, they have a Sunday event. Yep. Yeah, true. But so, so I think I think something like that would still work. It's worked at Airfield Anarchy. It's worked at Dirty Weekend. Tough Mudder have got a prime prime for it. It's prime for it. It really is prime for it. Yeah, but the Tough Mudder crowd are much more sophisticated. You'll you'll see them there with. Uh, yeah, I shaking. Go that far. <laughs> with, their new, with their new Tough Mudder red robes on. They're new tough red robes, which actually look khaki green. or yeah. green. <laughs> and by, 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 by khaki, I mean the colour. They're, they're not, they actually look quite, quite nice. You were determined to get us banned today, aren't you? We're all as listeners today. I'm doing, doing my best. Just just me. Dan doesn't realise this is a audition for him when I I indefinitely get, uh, get banned. Um, oh, I, 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 I'll get banned easy. Don't worry about that. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> right. So, should we, speaking of Sundays, should we talk about 15K on Sundays? Oh, yeah. You know, they've, what do they call it? Um, giving in to um, the Legionnaires and the, you know, the, the Tough Mudder runners. They've, they've caved. Tough Mudder's caved. Is that the answer? <laughs> it is. Yeah. And Ian was having a drink there in real life. Ian's yeah, drinking. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't exactly. get his words out. Dan had to jump in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think they have. I think they've sort of seen that we're just going to run a 10 and a 5K anyway. Now, if I book in for a 10K and I book in for a 5K, that takes one away from somebody else that could 
book it, so the numbers are, are kind of skewed. Um, but we're going to run it anyway. But then you also get the people that want to run the 15K, but can't necessarily get there on a Saturday either. Yeah. So they look at a Sunday and go, well, I'm not going to bother then. And they get that side of it, so they get that back into it. Or the people that volunteer on a Saturday and want to run it on a Sunday, they want to run 15K, but they can't because they've only got one volunteer code. No, that, that makes sense. You've also got people who might want to run a 15K Sunday morning and then are fast enough to get back for an afternoon shift. Yes, yeah, exactly, yeah. Why do we think they you know, didn't do it? Because I've heard rumours that they didn't do the 15 on the Sunday because they couldn't get enough volunteers on a Sunday. Do we think I know they they don't that's not the case? Volunteers. I Honestly, I thought it was the Spartan reason of why they do a beast on a Saturday and then the super and sprint on the Sunday because it allows them to close part of the course and start part of the uh, pack-up. Right. Another reason might be an American reason. So the events over in the US, their their Saturday, uh, a tough model is like our Sunday numbers-ish. Um, their Sunday, like Sunday's just gone, their last wave was at like quarter to 12, where, where our, ours on a Sunday, it's still, you know, we've, we've still got numbers going out sort of two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, so we have, we, have, we have more that run on a Sunday than they do. If they bring it in over there, they generally bring it over over here as well. It works over there because you just don't have the numbers to run on the Saturday. So, as Ian says, you know they can they can tear the course, they can start to tear the parts of the course down. Whereas over here, we have the numbers on a Sunday and we can run it on a Sunday. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. Of course, now everyone's trying to figure out how to do a fifteen, a ten, and a five, but that, that's their <laughs> issues. Run, it. Yeah, is enough. run the fifteen, run the five, then run the ten. Probably the best way because of 5k, you'll be back in the village with enough time to exactly, yeah. get home. Turn. Yep. So, so, Alan, you know more about this um, than I do, but because you see, you've actually read the press release, <laughs> Tough Mudder Go Fund Me. I know times were hard for Tough Mudder, but I never thought I would see Tough Mudder Go Fund Me. Um, you know, when I, when I got this, I thought this. I'm thinking, so to sign up, Basically, I raise a GoFundMe, GoFundMe page and people pay to it to, to make me run Tuffman. I thought it was like, you know, that's old at that, but it's not like that, no. So what they're saying is that a lot of charities have had a bit of hard time in the last two years through COVID. So they've teamed up with their um, UK signing platform, yeah, and there's going to be a GoFundMe page. So you, basically, you sign up and then you choose, yeah, the GoFundMe page, okay, that you want people to donate to and then you let people know so basically it's just a way of running for a charity you're still paying your entry fee um, and things like that but it's really seamless so you're not having to you're not having to first of all sign up for tough mudder and then go and open a separate go from your page it's all done seamlessly for you um all through the tough mudder platform that, that's good it's kind of similar to london marathon how virgin was their preferred a charity person, so they'd encourage you to use uh, use Virgin Money Raising, even though I don't believe Virgin Money Raising exists any anymore. Yeah, but yeah, that that's actually well done, tough mudder, and sorry for a cheap joke. And and one of the things I like about it as well, what it, what it sort of talks about is that charities are going to have their own platform page, and they're going to get discounted tickets. So if you want to register through the charity. Yeah, to run for the charity, then they'll get the discounted tickets and you get the GoFundMe page that way as well. Because a lot of people do that, don't they? A lot of people, like, you know, like London Marathon, a lot of people will get the tickets through the charity because they don't want to pay for it themselves. So they get to a charity, raise X amount of pounds. So I'm going to assume this is going to be a little bit like that as well. Um, I, th- I think it's great news that they're, they're, they're probably they're, they're offering something for free. You don't often get something for free from Tough Mudder. I really hope that if they do um, allow you to raise money for a free ticket, they don't use the same amount as for a London Marathon ticket. Is it about £2,500 for a London Marathon ticket? Give or take when you're raising for charity, yeah. Two and a half is tends to be around about the going rate. So, yeah, hopefully they'll be a bit, bit more sensible about it. And I'm sure they will. I'm sure there'll be a fair amount. I mean... To me, I mean, you talk about a fair amount. It depends on how much the charities are going to get, but 
at the end of the day, if they if a charity is getting fifty pounds for a ticket, they've got to pay fifty pounds for a ticket. I'd be saying to people to get more people to run, hundred quid, raise hundred quid, and you can run. Charity gets fifty quid. Tough money to get fifty quid. Quids in, aren't they? The more they get, the, the better it is for them. I hope they're not, they're not greedy and, like you say, they off, they ask for you want five hundred pound to run or or something like that because that just wouldn't be wouldn't be fair. No, well, it's kind of kind of productive as well, isn't it? Because people just wouldn't do it; they'd just literally buy their own ticket and then raise charity themselves. Yeah. But speaking of, well, I can't even think of a great segue. Uh, we did have a, a tough mother event this um, this weekend. In fact, we had two tough mother events, and this is part of the reason Dan's here because he happened to be at both of them. Yep. I think this is a great story. Dan, take it away. Tell me more. It's not the first time I've done it. I'm not gonna lie. Um, so I ran in London West, um, got down there Friday, stayed over there Friday night, uh, ran in London West and that's Saturday morning. So Saturday, Saturday morning, morning, yeah. First way, Saturday morning, run round like an idiot, 15k. Um <laughs> so the way where it is London West is perfect for getting to Heathrow. Um and the way with the flight time, the time zones. Um, it means you can fly to the US if there's an event on there, and there was in Philly. It was like a eight-hour flight, I think it was. Um, so I jumped on a plane. It wasn't just me; it was Leanne as well, Leanne Simmons. Um, you know, we jumped on a plane eventually, and we got to Philly, and we ran toughest there, and then we ran well, we ran 15k the next day at Philly on Sunday as well. So let's get this right. <laughs> This is amazing, this. Saturday morning, UK. Yep. We run we run the 15K. Yep. We 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 get showered in cold showers. Cold shower or what wet wipes are just still still get in, in the car. mud and just get in the car. The get car. changed, get in the car, yeah. Get the car down to Heathrow. Yep. On a plane. So you so you get into America and it's still Saturday in the States. Yeah, it's still Saturday. So there, so Philly is five hours behind. Right. So the flight was eight hours. Um, so that would have been, we would have landed, say, uh, would have been 10 o'clock in the evening, UK time. But Philly is then five hours behind. So it's five o'clock over there when we landed. And what time's the last wave over there then in Philly? Oh, on the Four Saturday, hours. not a clue. Didn't, didn't, right. didn't, didn't run at all on uh, like the Infinity or the, right. the 10K or 15K that they had there. Didn't run that on the Saturday. We went over and we ran toughest. Right. So you run on the Sunday at fifteen k on the Sunday, and yeah, it was, uh, well, five to ten k on the Sunday, yeah, yeah, that's amazing, yeah. Ian. Yeah, so Alan, so fifteen k, yeah, then toughest, yeah, then a ten and a five, yeah, which means that Dan and Leanne are probably the first British tough mudder legionnaires to have the new unholy Grail medal. <laughs> yeah, somebody will point out that it was slightly different mileage. Um, but we spoke to CMHQ about it. They, they, they were aware of time constraints. Um, I wasn't going to go out and run another 5K in the UK and miss the flight. Yeah, they, 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 were, they were happy with it. So yeah, we, we did speak to them. This is amazing. This is like, this is dreams. This is what dreams are made of, like, you know. No, stupidity. <laughs> <in a tin>. <laughs> <laughs> if I could bottle that up. I would save the like the, the world a lot of stupid stuff happening. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was what was it like getting into the states then at that at that time? You know, and like registering. And did people know, or, or did you keep it a secret in the states that you were coming over? Or a couple of I've been over quite like I say I've been over a few times. There's a couple of people knew. Um, we actually uh, Jack O'Reilly. He's he was over there anyway. He didn't run in London. I think he possibly ran on the Saturday over there. Um, and he was running toughest. Um, so he was there. He, he picked up some, well, basically water for us. I've got a few friends over there. I, I was speaking to a couple of them. Um, obviously, when it said hello to the rest of them when I got there. So I've got to ask, well, firstly, how many miles did you actually get on toughest overnight? I only did 40K. Um, I've got issues with my leg at the minute. So I actually ran the first, say, 5, 6K. The rest of it I walked. Um, so I got issue with my legs. So I walked it. Started feeling the blisters about 20k in. Started really feeling the blisters at about 35k. 
um, and then stopped um, at about five in the morning. We, we we did the 40k. And have you run that venue before in Philly? Yeah, yeah, I ran Philly before. Um, bizarrely, it was last time we had toughest. It was Philly on one weekend, and then it was meant to be Midlands. I think it was a weekend after. So I bought flights to Philly, and then they changed the date of the Midlands one, so it was on the same day. So I still went over there and did that one instead. Yeah, I've, I've run the, it's a really, really nice course. <laughs> it's hillier than I remember. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was talking to Leanne about it, because she, she hasn't run it. Um, I said, yeah, it's, it's a fairly flat course, you know, fairly, fairly quick, fairly flat. And we got there, and it was like, no, it's really not flat. It, it really wasn't. <laughs> yeah, um, a little bit less hillier than Henley, but not far off it. Um, yeah, the sun was worse. The sun was a lot worse. Yeah, I heard it was quite muddy as well. Or should I rephrase that? I heard from American friends it was muddy, so maybe by American standards. It wasn't. It wasn't. Um, obviously, you got the obvious things of, you know, you, like, you come out of mud mile, pitfall, any of the wet obstacles, and it's going to create some mud. But the rest of the course, no, it wasn't that bad. Oh, there was one stretch and it was, it was kind of swampy. Um, that was, um, but it's no northwest. It's nothing like Northwest. It was, it was muddier than Henley. It was muddier than Henley. Um, but no, from for our standards, not that bad. <laughs> oh, God. But this is almost like I'm going to just throw it to High Rocks. You know how they argue about um, sleds and uh, our sleds are easier? Americans, your tough mother courses are easier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and we're banned in America now as well. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. We'll, 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 we'll get everyone. Uh, what what obstacles did they have over which were different to what we have? So I'm trying to go on the course. They had they had mud mile that was I'm not kind of disappointing. Um, it was very small. That was that was like three mounds, uh, and that was it. Uh, pitfall. There wasn't any pits in pitfall, which was kind of strange. There. They set up Arctic Enemy differently. They dig a pit rather than having a skip now. Um, what they do is they dig a pit and they just have a slide into it and then it's cargo net out. Um, so that's that's a different setup. The rest are pretty much the same. There's a, there's a few other differences. Uh, Funky Monkey, the bars, uh, they're a little bit thicker. Look, takes a little bit more grip, grip strength on that. But apart from that, they're pretty much like for like. Block they- messages. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I keep it. Enjoy- their block mess actually really good. It's made out of like a white plastic. Um, so much easier to turn, even with two or three people in it. It's not as wide, um, but it's so much so easier to turn than ours. It doesn't hold as much water, or it keeps a lot of the a wa- lot more water out. It still water gets in there, but it keeps like so much better. Their block mess. I was going to ask: Is there ever a still at the back of a truck? Yep. <laughs> their Everest is. Yeah, it's it's on the back of a truck and it's it's steep. It really is steep. Um, the, the confusion in Alan's face here. I probably should yeah, explain. I don't get this back of a truck. So it's like on the side of a truck or the back of a truck. It's literally it's like on a back. It's, so when they pack it all up, they can just drive off. No so, way. How yeah, is that? They sort of drop it down and it goes. But it's it's it's, it's like a metal material. Um, we had ropes used a rope every, I didn't I, I didn't even attempt just to run up it um, it looks a lot steeper it doesn't you know how we have like that flat edge they don't have that at all what they have is they have the curved edge and then at one side they've got like um, like a brace coming off you know like um, on an Irish table yeah or something like that coming off it so you can run up and grab that um, yeah it's, it, it looks a little bit steeper a little bit taller um, on the on the on the straight we haven't had the curved edge Everest for a while, have we? I know we used to have it years they ago. Did, they did at London West. Did they have it at London West, the curved yeah, edge? Yeah, and so at London West, they had, they, had, they had the flat edge, they had a curved edge um, that was a little bit higher, and right. then the next one along was actually the old curved edge, which was actually quite high. So they had three different iterations of it at London wow. West. This, I can't really remember good. if you had it in Midlands. They might have had one curved edge, but right in the corner at Midlands. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was tiny. mainly I think flat. It was very tiny, weren't yeah, it? Yeah, they, they had a. Yeah, I was laid on. I've, there's, yeah, there's a photo of me laid on that. Um, I ran up it. Yeah, yeah. I, I normally go one side, and I thought I'd try the other one. Um, yeah, it they, was they, interesting. They, you mentioned Mud Mile being quite small because yeah. 
and I don't know if it's me because I'm not I've not done Tough Mudder for like nearly four years now, four or five years. Um, but I think Tough Mudder at the Midlands when we went to the Midlands this year was much shorter than I can remember any 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 mud mile for for a long time. Um, Midlands is always quite a long one. Um, About five ditches, wasn't it? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. See, when I used to when when I did them and I was heavily into doing um, tough mudders, I always remember like eight or nine ditches. You know, like going through them, or maybe it was just me back then. I was no, I, I know, God, I'm, I'm just trying to think. But all of mine have sort of melded into one. I'm trying. You know, yeah. people ask you about a course on a certain year, and you're like, yeah, um, yeah. Um, so normally, I mean, the UK ones, Midlands is sort of the longer mud miles, right? Because of where it is. Um, Northwest is definitely the muddiest. Um, I can't even remember it, London West, if I'm honest. No, see, I, I tend to always do Yorkshire, so you know, I always look at yeah. that, and it was like, and I guess I'm comparing it to that. And I know last year Yorkshire wasn't as long either because we went and filmed Yorkshire last year, didn't we? And, um, yes, we, yeah, we, we definitely did. Midlands always feels longer because you also have the well, you moved it first and foremost, but now you've got the bog before the bog, don't you? you yeah, you have a so it always feels your. Uh, I do prefer the mud at Northwest, even though it's harder to get up, which is a lot easier to clean off. <laughs> oh, I, I am the Northwest yet. No, Northwest is this year for me, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You're doing toughest. Yeah. 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 You'll, you'll enjoy that. Yeah. Liar. <laughs> I, know. I know. I know he's lying here. And you can't, you're not getting this out of me. I know he's not telling me the truth here. <laughs> no, I, um, I like Northwest. Um It'll be interesting to see what they do with toughest there. Um, there's parts I don't. If they use certain parts, I'm, I, I'm not going to like it. Um, course tried to kill me once, so yeah. There's, there's certain parts of course I don't like, um, but I'm hoping they keep that. There's like um, a, like a U shaped. I don't I don't know what it was to begin with, but it was like a bog. You know, you go into it and yeah. it really really deep and quite kind of funny. Um, yeah. I hope that's not part of it. Doing that every lap is just be a, oh, God, no. <laughs> no. I, I think, Dan, what we probably should do is close to toughest, maybe get you on again. If, uh, yeah. I think that'd be cool. And just we could have a, a bit of a preview of it because you just said that and I could probably waste the next 20 minutes talking about my dislike of sewer rat and things like that. Yeah. So I, I, yeah. I, I, I want to have this talk. I don't think it's right for, for this show. I think we... Uh, well, they... we uh, sewer rat made an appearance in Philly. That was there. Same type? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, they The tubes were actually quite wide. I, I could actually crawl up the tube, uh, tubes. I'm, I'm quite tall. Um, so the tubes that we have, I can't crawl up them, whereas the ones there, I, I was on my hands and knees and could. Um, but when I come out of it, I come out and I face forward and then just drop in that way. And they, they didn't have an issue with that. I, I wish I'd got, I got the... I wish I'd got a passport first so I could get over to the States to do one. <laughs> I think I need to go and get my passport and maybe do, do some foreign tough mudder and, you know, external out of the UK. I'd you always know, recommend it. You know what, Alan? We should, probably should have a show sometime where we talk to people who've done international OCRs. Let, let's get on that. Yeah. That's the next <laughs> on the agenda. That's coming up on the agenda, I think, Ian, that Definitely. international OCR day. Definitely. And have you got anything more to uh, to probe Dan, Dan about uh, nope. before we, we close the door? Uh, Dan, have you got anything else you'd like to say about Tough Mudder Filthy and how stupid you were of uh, having a sore leg and strapping yourself in a plane for however many hours it was? Uh, no, no. Um, it was good fun. Um, it's, it's, it's actually the third time I've done it. Um, so I, I sort of knew what was coming along. I, I, I managed to drag somebody along with me this time. Um, yeah, it was fun. I'm not gonna lie, it was fun. The, the weather, um, keep an eye on the weather for Northwest, see what it's like. Say anything like that, you're not gonna need your wetsuit. Oh, you really? Not. So that's great news. That see, no wetsuit for me. And well, no, that's if it's 30 degrees in Cheshire <laughs> in August. Now nah, you, you're gonna need your wetsuit <laughs> you're in, gonna need in September. I was just, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's a week after the bank holiday weekend. If memory serves, uh, we're having this um, off air that you know, all the days are merging into one, aren't we? And we just can't keep uh, track yeah. of months anymore. Yeah. Uh, 
Right. Well, I, I'm going to say, uh, say bye, Dan. You're welcome to stay on if, if you want, but uh, you know, I'm going to just bear off. No, thank you so much, Dan, for, no for joining us, mate. And we will see you either in the pub or just on an episode soon. Yeah, yep. definitely, definitely. Yep. Cheers, Dan. Yep. Thanks for joining us. You yep. take care. You know, gents, have fun. Ian, from from like going abroad to do a little bit of OCR and things like that. Let's go back to the UK now. Um, UK UK OSF British Kids Championship race. Have you checked this out? I'm gonna lie. And say I have, but instead I'll, I'll actually be truthful and say I sadly didn't. But I'm glad I've got an awesome co-host who will have all the details. I have got all the details. So it's going to happen on October 23rd. Now, this part next bit surprised me because I've never heard of this race, the Swanbourne Endeavour. And it's been going 11 years. Actually, now you mention it, yeah, I, I did read that part and I was a bit... Well, firstly, I wondered whether it was actually in the UK, and then I worked out Swanbourne was over here. But yeah, Swanbourne Endeavour, I think it's great that it's a local race. Yeah, <laughs> local to people in the London area. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's, it's a, it turns around, it says it's two age categories. Um, so it's a 4K course um, for age groups between 10 and 17. I have read two two. Age categories. Now, where have I read that there's two age categories? See, now this is where I'm going. Oh, yeah, 10 to 13 and 14 to 17. So those are the two age categories. And they've got to be born after August 31st, 2013. They can compete in a competitive wave. Um, I think it's great that we've got a bit of a, a competitive race going off for the kids, you know, just purely for the kids because... Is it mini mini military mud runs? No longer on. They haven't put a race on this year, should I say? And they have us. We we do have little Welly, which did go off for little Welly's yeah. doing well. So well done to to um, little Welly. I think our, our mate Gavin is. Uh, I don't know to what extent he's associated there, but he's definitely helping out. I believe. Yeah, he helps them build the course and set up the course and everything like that. Is is very much um, invested in little Welly down down there. And, you know, that's the only one I can think of. You know, Overload does one in August, but we, you know, it's just a kid's wave, proper obstacles, but we don't we don't have no proper race for the kids. This is the first one. There's only Spartan, isn't there? The, the Spartan, which is now actually doing a more competitive race. Obviously, you've got Mini Mudder, which yep. is doing it, but that's more of a fun run. And you know what I've just realised, Alan? What's that? Whoever wins will be the first UK OCR champions for five years. Oh yeah, there will be, won't it? It's been five years since we've had a we've had a British OCR championship. Yeah. So yeah, if you yeah, if if you're listening to um to this and you're in this age category, first we apologize of the terrible, terrible content at, at times. And I was gonna apologize for the adult themes, but no, we're 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 less uh, less serious than um <laughs> than some kids' shows. So but secondly, yeah. Sign up, and it'll be great to see uh, everyone. Uh, what date was it again, Alan? I know you said I completely, completely went out of my head. I'm sure you always wait until I go off the page on my other. Of, of course, I do. I, I can actually watch because I can see the, the light reflecting on your face, so I know when you've come off. <laughs> it's the 23rd of October. So, 23rd of October. Have you just put the light on so I could couldn't do that so again? Can't see, yeah, I just I put the big light on. This is what we're talking. About. This is the big light, not the little lights. <laughs> Listener, I apologise in advance when Alan gets shouted at by Wendy during the show for wasting electric by having big light on when it's still light outside. <laughs> exactly. If I put it on, she told me to put big coat on. <laughs> Don't blame her. Don't blame her. All about the pennies and pounds. But no, if you if you are. Um, a youngster look into it go along it will be a great experience for you and if you're going to get take part get your get your parents to get in touch and it'll be great to great to speak to a, a few of the competitors beforehand 100 percent. yeah we should, we should have a little um i wonder if we get a nose off i'm sure if we can have will to get nose off for that oh that would be amazing if we could figure out who's going to compete it would yeah. be great. Or just some names, because we don't need to do predictions. But if we can get a list of names of people, then, yeah, let's do a, do a who's hot and give everyone well-deserved kudos. Definitely, definitely. And I'm going to stay with you with things that's happening, Ian, yeah? Because the, the best thing is we had something old 
went last last week, didn't it? Rat race dirty weekend ended, you know. And I spoke to people and all the obstacles were numbered. Do you know why they were numbered? Did you get raffle tickets? Not far off. They were auctioned off. All the obstacles were auctioned off after the race. Yeah, so I think it was a bit of a private auction. Well, <laughs> what race is going to go and have the money to go and buy a travelator? You know, the travelator at the end, the one that um, Dassos can't get up quite, you know. Sorry there, Dassos, but, you know. No, no Dassos is fine with this one. It's the rough runner one. It's the rough. Oh, so we'll be all right here then. Oh, good news. So the Rat Race Dirty Weekend Travelator now belongs to Nuclear Racers. Now, that's great news. That really is good news because it keeps it in the sport. 100%. And what better race to go to, you know. Um, as I said the other way, when I were editing that um, video, um, I got four more for going that. So I've now this on it as well. Oh, it's been an amazing, amazing event. To be fair, the Rough Runner video is loved on our YouTube channel because of the Travelator carnage. <laughs> it is, it is, isn't it? It, it really is. So, so, peep, so they're auctioning off the various obstacles. So did Nuclear buy a load more space hoppers as well? No, they didn't. I, I do believe they bought some other things, but as of yet, they've not all been released what they bought. I think they might have bought some um, materials. So I do know they bought some of those, you know, those big black tubes. I know there was some of them. I don't know what else they bought. Uh, who bought Darkness? Uh, well, what were they for sale? <laughs> no one would have bought them, I don't think. I wonder how much they got paid for that. I mean, at the end of the career, would you say Darkness at the end of the career? Oh, they're trying to restart. I'm, I'm not, not sure. I'm not, not sure. There's probably one listener who's silently sobbing because their dance is number one fan. And we've lost that listener again now. Because of oh, me. yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> we, we're down to three. But, <laughs> but any, anyway, should we move on? Because we do have a few things. Uh, something exciting happening in the world of horse punching. Um, yeah, I'm going to come to that in a bit because I think that's going to last a bit longer. Let's stay with a bit more news close to our bit of new things. Exo races, if you know I did tender in Leeds. That's going ahead on July in London, so new venue in London on 19th of July. If you're into a little bit of running, a little bit of road running, want a little bit of adventure, 19th of July, sign up XO Racers. Um, it's really just go, just go on, it's xoracers.com. That's xoracers.com. If you want to go on there, sign up for that. I think it's only £28, um, bit of a bargain, great little run, um, drink afterwards, all of that type of things. Um and I want to talk about Spartan giving away 50 tickets to listeners from the podcast. We're going to shout out to another podcast area. We so, are, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take this. Yeah, they gave 50 tickets away to listeners of a school of Cali... Oh, I shouldn't have talked about this. Calisthenics <laughs> slash Movement Strength and Play podcast. And big shout out to listener Richard Willis with a tip on this. He actually told us the day, sadly, the day after we recorded... So there's a good chance that all these tickets are taken now. But <laughs> I wanted to mention it for two reasons. One, because Richard deserved a well-deserved shout-out. Yep. And two, because we were talking about Spartan's Troubles last um, last week. Yep. And this is a great idea of reaching out to people who are not in the, the OCR sphere because Kelly Svennix, uh, however you say it, um, yeah, they... That that's I'm I'm gonna embarrass myself here by uh, they say, but it's more of gymnastic type, isn't it? I yeah, believe. Yeah, I think so as well. That's, that's my understanding of it as well. So they're not people who are necessarily in the OCR sphere, but they're adjacent. So giving these tickets out is a good way to get new blood to the sport. So I'm kind of glad we found this news out late because it means that hopefully those tickets have gone to people they were aimed at. And well done, Spartan, for thinking outside the box. 100%. 100%. I think it's great. Great great from Spartan. And I know they're giving a few 25% discounts off coming up soon. So I know there's, there's one today as we record, but it ends tonight. So we can't tell people about that one. Except um, we just did. But we just did. But there are some more coming up from my information as well. Um, at Flash One Day Sales. Cool. Right. So what else do you want to go to? Should we just cover off a few things that are happening this Sunday, maybe? Because it, it's just quick mentions. Yep. Uh, so this Sunday, we have Farm Fitness versus Rumble, the final. 
Um, that is over at Farm Fitness. It's going to be a, a um, beg your pardon, I can't even remember the name of my show now. It's going to, <laughs> it's going to be a hybrid race uh, called the Engine put on by Turf Games. It's been presented by our good friends at MyZone. You can enter the engine if you want. I believe it's uh, 10 quid and it's in the morning and you can then stay a, a, around to watch the afternoon's festivities. So two teams of 16, Who's going to come out on top, Team OCR or Team uh, Functional Fitness? Because we can't say CrossFit. Yep, Functional Fitness, because CrossFit is not. CrossFit is not. And if you want more details, listen to the UK HXR podcast. The other thing is it's Murph this weekend. Yep. It, over in, in America, it I think it's Memorial Day. So any any people who are in that sphere, of, and that's the third can listener, Second, this is only the second, Ian. There's no <laughs> third one. <laughs> but, but yeah, a- anyone who is in- into your functional fitness, you may end up doing the Murph. So best of luck to you there. And is there anything else I need to cover, Alan? No, I'm just going to say um, Brooklyn Half Marathon first um, before we're going to talk about the modern pentathlon because a bit of sad news is coming out of America. Um, David Reitman, age 32, finished the Brooklyn Half Marathon on Coney Island um, and then collapsed and was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. There's a bit of a heat wave over there. So I'm just going to say to people who are running in, running in this country at the moment, because we've got a little bit of a heat wave for the next couple of weeks, yeah? And we'll definitely have a bit of heat wave coming up in as the summer months and that. Guys, just please be careful. Make sure you hydrate pre-race and hydrate through the race. If you get thirsty, you're already dehydrated. I'm going to say that to you. Um, and that's common knowledge. And a lot of athletes will tell you that. Big athletes, not, not just someone who's a wannabe athlete like me. The big athletes will tell you that. If, you, if you're feeling thirsty, you're already dehydrated. Small amounts often. So drink small amounts often um, and, stay, and just stay hydrated in this summer, guys. We don't want nothing happening over here. And also, if you're going out for a longer run, make sure you're taking some kind of salt or uh, the other thing that, which I can't can't remember. I'm going to just say Lucas said. Electrolytes. electrolytes. There we go, electrolytes. Yeah. Can you see that Alan is the nutritionist of, uh, <laughs> of the pair of us? But yeah, because water alone on longer runs won't always suffice. So make sure you take something with electrolytes as well. Okay, uh, pentathlon? Yeah, let's talk modern pentathlon for a little bit because it's been announced now. Okay, so we we've known we've known for a couple of weeks that the the horse jumping the that side of the modern pentathlon is going to be replaced by an obstacle race. So that's came out. Um, our friend Matt B Davis has had a couple of pentathletes on his podcast um, asking questions and things like that, and we, we've all been watching with bated breath to find out what this obstacle course race is. And they're going to have a test event in Turkey, um, which is coming up soon. And it's interesting that they haven't actually gone with what we would call, we would know, as an obstacle course race here. So we think obstacle course race, we think 5K plus, we're talking like, you know, 10, 20, 30 obstacles, bit of mud, bit of things like that. They've not gone with that. They've gone with 100 meter course, yeah, with 10 obstacles. Now, it lists 10 obstacles. It says which include. And now, some of these you're going to potentially laugh at ascending steps. Is that what it is? Staircase? Well, I'm wondering if that's um, De- Devil's Staircase or whatever it's called. <laughs> it says ascending steps. That could be anything. What I what I envisage on an hundred meter course, and this is just my eyes, I envision like a more army style course. So I'm thinking it might be them where there's there's different bars and you go up. And I'm using my hands here, and I know our listeners can't see that, but there's different bars where you would run up and then jump off the other end. Oh, a bit like Krypton Factor. Yeah, uh, yeah, that that would make sense. Yeah, that that makes sense. Okay, carry on. Which then goes with second one, a rope swing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A one point five meter wall. So between six and seven foot for those who can't whip that out. Yeah. Uh, monkey bars. Okay. Offset steps. Would that be like stepping stone types where you're moving from side to side? You know, the wooden 
um, steps yeah. on uh, on Krypton Factor. I think so as well, yeah. A 0.5 metre low crawl. So a two and a half foot barbed wire crawl, something like that, but not middle barbed wire. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So yeah, about a two foot um, low crawl, yeah. Yeah. Now, we've got a rings rig. So we all we just think that's just rings, swinging rings, that type of thing. Yeah. Under, over, under, over. That will just be the, well, the, the standard hurdles, won't it? That's I heard what I'm a lot thinking, yeah. I, I was hoping it might be a weaver, but I don't see it being a weaver. No, I, I suspect it's going to be high hurdle, low hurdle, high hurdle, low hurdle. Yeah. So, like, uh, like the first off Scott Gladiators. Yeah. Wheels rig. So I'm going to say it's like um, the, what they call the spinning monkey at nuclear. Yeah, like a whirly bird type. Yeah. Um, balance beams. I like that because I don't think we see enough balance beams in the UK. And I agree with it as well. I, I like the idea of a balance beam. Um, it's something that I'm thinking of. So, yeah. Next one then, angled ladders. No clue. Now, nuclear do one where the ladders move. So I'm wondering maybe similar. I don't know. Or do you think it just might be a ladder going up to a pyramid top and one going down to the side? We, we don't know. P- potentially, maybe a ladder going up, walk across and then... Then yeah. Dara have no idea. Oh, we could have stolen snakes and ladders from Overlord. <laughs> snakes and ladders from Overlord, yeah. Um, and then the last one, a tsunami curved wall. I'd think with that, we're probably talking the thing that uh, World's Highest OCR have, and you have know, the wooden one that they have. It comes back on itself. So which not comes like back an Everest, on but one that comes back on itself. Yeah, they call it the ninja wall of tsunami wall. So that would be my guess. Yeah, that, that's an interesting set. It is, isn't it? You know, there's some good obstacles there. The, the only thing is we're talking about 100 metres. That I think that's the part that, that gets me out. I guess they're trying to do it because they're trying to fit it into an area. Yeah. Well, to me, 100 metres, again, I'm going back to the gladiators here. I'd say gladiators was probably about 100 metres. Yeah. And that, that's right. So I'm thinking it's going to be like obstacle, two metres of running. Obstacle, two metre run, obstacle. Do we think this is because, don't they have a, a cross-country run as well in modern pentathlon? They they do. They have a laser run, which is a yeah. combination of a cross-country run and targets um, with a, well, with a, a rifle type. Or it might be a handgun, I can never remember. But yeah, they have that. So this would be more, like you say, more of a ninja, more of a... Krypton Factor, more of an eliminator from Gladiators. I, I will say... Fair play to them. Some of those obstacles would be difficult for some OCR runners. Completely agree. Completely agree. Now, the one thing that worries me on this, yeah, we're talking about the modern pentathlon, yeah? So the modern pentathlon, yeah, everyone knows you've got to have the laser run, you've got to have the fencing, you've got to have all of that type of stuff. How are these people going to go and test all these? Because not every OCR has all these, yeah? You know, do we think that the modern pentathlon are going to have a game? So, you know, there's, there's going to be one in every country every year, isn't there? You know what I mean? Britain have one. I'm pretty assuming there's going to be smaller ones popping up here and there and everywhere as well. You know, there's not a lot. I know that. I think there's about five in the UK. I talked about the other week. That's a lot of obstacles for a small thing to build. Yeah, although we should point out this is a tester. So I suspect that they're putting this on. And I don't think all of these will make the modern pentathlon. I think that this is a tester of what is practical to build. Obviously, the tsunami wall is the thing we've put in there to grab the headlines. Mm. That That is its sole purpose, and it did do that because BBC website had to explain what a tsunami wall was. So that was there for headlines. If I was to be honest, I think eventually it'll be more like an Everest. Yeah, I, 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 lo- I love the obstacles. I'm just thinking practically, can every pentath- pentathlon event have all these obstacles? And that's the part I'm just not convinced of. So where will the where will the athletes get to train on them? Um, True. PT well, bear- bound. Yeah, PT bound. But bear in mind, for a pentathlon event, it's already quite an expensive sport because you had to have a horse and a show jumping arena. Yeah, but there's a lot of show jumping and reason around the country where they could go to. So, you know, there's there's a lot of that. There isn't a lot of places where they can go to these. So I couldn't imagine um, 
uh, off the top of my head, I would turn around and say nuclear could put that on. Yeah. Um, definitely PT Barn have probably got all of those. I'm not sure of any of many other obstacle gyms out there that have got all of those obstacles. And even if they did, how feasible would it be to hold an event there along with the fencing and everything else that goes off with pentathlon? You're right. I don't want to, although bear in mind this is international, but I do think that I think this is a headline grabbing set of obstacles. Yeah. And I reckon when it finally evolves into what's going to be at the event, it'll be a, a lot different. I think out of those obstacles, I think they'll probably keep monkey bars because they're easy. They'll probably keep um, the balance beams, the low crawl, maybe some of the steps, maybe the um, rope swing. But I think the rigs may disappear or you just don't you just don't know do you but I, I do think it's been made to be a spectacle because we want to sell the the idea of the sport to people who are going to decide whether to put it back in the olympics exactly and it's, it leads me to my next conversation this a little bit because we talk about ukosf yeah and um, trying to be recognized now pentathlon is recognized and there's also another um one out there that is recognised Parkour UK? It is. I think that was the last sport to be declared a sport. Yeah. So we're trying to follow in their footsteps. Uh, a lot of love for Parkour guys. Definitely. And this week it's been announced that they're going to receive £1.575 million to help support and grow Parkour. That's yeah, from that Sport England, I think it is. Yeah, and this is something that put people probably don't realise being a sport opens up all sets of windows. You probably don't realise how much Sport England has supported American football in this country. Practically every team I know has had at least 10K, maybe 20K from Sport England to buy American football pads. So if you're thinking, well, how will being a sport help us? That's how it will help. It opens up all kinds of uh, funding avenues, which have to be spent on certain things. So, for example, the American football, you had to buy um, shoulder pads and helmets and you had to give them the receipts. So, it, I think, well done to parkour. I can't wait to see what we use the money for. Well, yeah, I, I can't. I think it's great. And, I, I mean, let's hope that UK OSF can keep on doing what they're doing. They're gaining a lot of traction. We're, we're helping them as much as we possibly can as well um, by promoting whatever, whatever they've got going off, because as long as we agree with it anyway. Um, and we do agree with 99.9% .9 of things with them. Um, so, yeah, we keep on going that way and we will eventually get get that recognition, I think, um, and potentially that money can come into our sport to help it grow even bigger. Absolutely, ab absolutely. Uh, there's a couple more things on this. Um, do you want to cover Savage Syndicate? This might be a quick one. Yeah, so just something that um, just came to light the other week. So, I'm, you know, I'm a member of lots of little groups and that that fly all around the world. Savage Race in America are a little bit under fire at this moment in time. Um, I personally think rightly so as well. So they have a pro race and you have to complete, complete it in two hours, 30 minutes. Um, okay. This this past week, um, not going to name names, mainly because I'm not going to go back to the article and, and check all the names up and everything else. But the men sets off at 8 o'clock and they've got to finish it at 10.30. The women sets off at 8.05, but they've still got to finish it at 10.30. So they only get two hours and 25 minutes. And when a, a, an athlete has been DQ'd because she took two hours and 29 minutes, I think it's wrong here that they're giving women less time to complete a race than a man. Yeah, I, I have that issue and... We have that in similar things like a marathon. A marathon has a cut-off time, mm. but a marathon's cut-off time starts from, usually starts from the last runner, Yeah, which I, I think is fair. So if you're going off earlier, you get a little bit more time. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't think that should have been DQ. It, and what did the DQ actually achieve? Do you remember where they finished? Or They, did, they, were, they were quite low down. I think they were, they, were the, they were the last female pro to finish you know but it was about finishing for it this, this girl was like aiming to finish in the pro way and she she was checking her time and she was she was there she, she'd done it she thought she'd done it you know 
um, 8.29, sorry, 2.29. And, yeah, they're, they're under a bit of fire for it, Savage. Rightly so. I think you need to look at your results. I think you need to look at your rules, Savage. Um, if you're saying 2.30, you've got to get 2.30. You can't. You can't then just give another another one less. Yeah, exactly. And it's not really going to impact anything, then. But it will negatively impact that lady for no gain. Yeah. What does it actually achieve? Yeah. She she played by the rules that you advise her of. So yeah, that that's just um, just not good good at all. But should we? Go from slightly sad news. Should we go to some good news, Alan, in terms of some shout outs that you wanted to give out? Yeah, so this is going to be my new corner, Ian. I, I want to start and give shout outs to people who achieve great things in a week. So, not, not just we always give a shout out to the athletes who have come first, second, third, at all the races, which is absolutely brilliant. But there's a lot of people out there, like this girl we've just talked about at Savage Race, you know, who's gone out there, tried her best, and achieved something amazing. She's you know, it's the first time she's ever achieved that time. But now, and I want to give shout-outs to people like that going forward. This week, I'm going to go a little bit back in history, and we're going to give a shout-out to everyone who got a weekend warrior um, patch from UKOSF last year. Um, so there's not many, so I'm going to give a shout-out to all of them. But then going forward, I want people to email me, admin at UKOCR.com, message me on Facebook, and I'll give you a shout-out. Um, going to take maximum of five minutes of this podcast up. This is only going to take a few uh, less than a minute for us today. Yeah, and just to confirm, it probably won't be in every week thing. So, so listener, yeah, if it doesn't come out, if you're emailing us and it doesn't come out the same week, that's probably because you emailed us after recording um, yeah. schedule. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you email us and it doesn't come out, don't worry, we will get to them all. Yes, definitely, definitely. So, weekend warrior is where you have got to complete. If I remember right, it's six events. Six events in a year. I want to say eight, but um, let's split the difference, say seven, because I know that way we're both wrong. Check UKF web, UKOSF website, I will say. Um, yeah, d- definitely check UKOSF website. And in our case, James, can you let us know? Yeah, James will always let us know. Probably has let us know, we just never, never read it. Um, but these are the people who got it last year. So Wayne Grumpy King um, got an award from us as well. Yeah, volunteer of the year, I believe. They did, yeah. Ramunas X, you always I'm get that one. So, yeah, I'm so glad you, you're reading these out. <laughs> Nathan Hawkins, okay. Jane and Craig Simia, Stephen Mesham, James Burton. It was everywhere, James Burton. Like, it's everywhere this year as well, isn't it, James Burton? He doesn't sleep. He doesn't, I'm sure he doesn't. Katie Kennington, and the final one, Kyra Cushway. So, yeah, you got to do, I'm sure, I'm sure it's six or seven or maybe even eight different events throughout the year and you'll get a badge. Uh, you've got to be just a member of it and just let them know which events, member of UKOSF and let them know which events you've done and you'll get you'll get your patch. Absolutely. And I think you can also get for volunteering as well at various events. Yeah, vol- it's volunteer or run. You don't have to, you don't, you don't have to run. If you volunteer, you still get, that still race still counts. F- fantastic. Right, Alan. It's for, well, firstly, do you want to just cover what's coming up in terms of races? I know we covered what's this Sunday, but what's a bit further afield? Um, yeah, well, next week, so next weekend, we have got the Farm Yard Jam, which is coming up. I'm allowed to say it now, aren't I? So this is the race which I'm not be mentioned, or one of them. So the Farm Yard Jam next weekend. It's going to be a small event, Ian, small niche. Um, first time we've done it. We haven't got a lot of runners. But we're still going ahead. We're still putting it on, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, Mud Monsters is coming up. Um, and Summer Wolf. Fantastic. I think that's the last Mud Monsters for a while we were talking about. So It is, yeah. So depending where you are in the country, either come to the Farmyard Jam or head to Mud Monsters or head to Wolf Room. Summer Wolf Room. And, and people are welcome to come at Farmyard Jam and just spectate, you know, um, Hopefully we'll go to the 48 hours. I'm, I'm hoping we go to the 48 hours. I really, really hope. I, I'm i not sure because I'll probably be there. And yeah, that was the nervous pause listener, which I'll <laughs> probably take out in post-production. But yeah, he was waiting for me to say, yeah, if, if you guys want to take six hours, it's great for me. You know, that is the thing. I want everyone to go, but then I'm thinking sleep for 48 hours <laughs> it's a downside oh, it's okay jamie does all the work anyway I, i've been to overlord oh ouch ouch stabs me in the back 
<laughs> no, in the front, in the front. In the front, yeah. Um, and then week after, we've got a week after as well, um, just so people can sign up, Gelt Gladiator and Spartan Wales. Welcome to Spartan Wales week after. Oh, fantastic. If it's Spartan Wales, so that means it's the Euros as well. No, the Euros is down in Pippingford. No, not Spartan Euros, the Euro Euros. It might be. You know, the OCR Euros. But see, now you've completely thrown me. It probably is actually thinking about it, because Spartan Could- Wales is the same time as... I, I um, thought it was. Um, let me just check. And, yeah, I'm just typically tapping away as we just check, showing how great we are at keeping up to date with, with stuff. So the OCR European Championships in Italy are... And it's in Italian. Great. <laughs> <laughs> read, it, read, it, read it in Italian first, because Fre- Federico will get this one. Go on. Try and read I can't Italian read first. Italian. It's June 9th, June 10th, June 11th, June 12th. So, yeah, so, yeah it is the same weekend. <laughs> I'm not going to, yeah, yeah. We we like Federica. I don't want to insult her by trying to um, speak Italian. No, I know you're not. <laughs> oh wait, I, I can read this. Short course, short course in the right format. No time to think. Just run like hell. Pass all of the obstacles. Swim, crawl, and hang. First day of OCR EC will be served hot. There we go. That was fine Italian, apparently. That was fine Italian, I I quite like that. That's what you said on the website. But anyway, who have you got on the podcast this um, week? Um, This week, um, I've only recorded tonight, Ian, but we're going to have Naomi Mitchell on the podcast this week. Come in. Fantastic. Can't wait uh, to hear. She she got a third at Infinity of Memory Serves. She did, yeah. 45k. um, Linda Johnson first, followed by Katie Joyce and um, then Naomi. Um, yeah, she's got a good story to tell. Um, a young mum um, making her way in life. Um, I don't want to get too much away, but let's just say she's moved from Scotland down to Cambridgeshire to um, fulfil her OCR dream. Well, that may, it makes uh, sense. Unfortunately, there's not enough uh, events in Scotland. May- maybe Scottish OCR can put more events on and tempt her back. She's done every event... Oh, I can't can't say. She does every event apart from one, and I get the one point for doing that one. (laughs) Let me guess. That was because it was in 2011 and no one had heard of OCR. (laughs) Close enough. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, dear. And on on that note, I'm going to say it's goodbye from me. And it's a goodbye from me. Take care, everyone.